Deanna Perazzo versus Taya Valkyrie. So here is the state of the AEW Women's Division here in, uh, I guess, February 2024 now. If you like Tony Storm's gimmick and Tony Storm's comedy, you are going to enjoy the Women's Division. If you don't think her comedy is funny and you don't want to see comedy during a wrestling show, you're going to think the whole thing sucks. Because every segment that she is even tangentially involved in, the focus is on her and her comedy. So yes, I laughed like constantly during this match, but uh, it did nothing to help Taya or Deanna. In fact, as a match, the second half was quite poor, if I'm being honest. But uh, I'm laughing at, uh, at Tony, who said I was going to tell Taya chit up a tits out, but she already got the memo. She said something about Excalibur that I didn't understand. I listened to it like five times, but apparently it was very funny. His only response was, I'm dead. She informs Mr. Tasmaniac that it's pronounced souple. And uh, what was some, some else here? Uh, when uh, Taya got thrown, they're brawling outside and Taya got thrown into her. Tony begins to scream that someone has pissed in her seat. Yeah. This is during the finish of the match, everyone. Well, all I know is I write copious notes. Yeah. And I literally wrote the finish and nothing else. Yeah. I don't remember anything about this match because everything was all about Tony. Yeah. So, and this was not like just some nothing happening match. No, this is the her, Tony's top contender. Yes. And uh, a woman who was a top contender not that long ago. Yes. Yeah. Who was unranked right now. Well, yeah. I might well, add. She did lose here. So, the only thing that matter, really matters is the finish, which was not just the Venus de Milo where Deanna pulls your arms, like ties them in a knot behind your back. But then she also, at the same time, put Taya in a leg spread sitting position and put her forehead on the mat. So you try to do this to me, I'm separating both my shoulders and tearing the groin on either side. Hey, listen. And probably breaking a rib or two. Hey, you know, if you guys got a significant other, a wife, mm -hmm. you know... Have her go like this and bring her arms and make her hands touch. As often as I can. 95% of you, 95% of women can do that without a problem. Dudes, no chance. So uh, it looked very, very impressive, but, uh, you know, I think you'll see that. I think you'll see Deanna doing that to a lot of different people. And in fact, you know, a lot of guys can as well, but not straight out like this. They can do it with their arms down here mm -hmm. because when, when uh, uh, Penta does the, the arm breaker, he essentially does that same thing. It's just chest flexibility. Mm -hmm. Most dudes, especially wrestlers, their chest is too tight, and so you try and go like this, and that's as far back as their arms go. But most women, you can... Some of them, you can even have them cross their arms in the back like that. But... Um, it's a flexibility thing. But it looked impressive. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Tony's comedy is the spotlight of every segment she's in. Actually, the part where I literally laughed the hardest is afterwards as Deanna is staring down Tony and Tony is ranting back at her. There is Luther who is looking at, uh, uh, looking at Deanna with disdain and crushing her head like kids in the hall. And that made me laugh. Renee goes to Darby Allen. And says, Darby, I would love to talk to you about your admiration for the Young Bucks. Darby's like, what? And the Bucks walk up. They are perturbed that Darby is letting a 65-year-old leech take money out of all their pockets. We used to be a trio. We had a goth phase in high school. You're ducking us. You're ghosting our texts. You got a problem with us? And Darby says he's the only thing on his mind is the tag titles. He storms off. And one of the Bucks, I think it was Nicholas, who says, he's Big leaking us. <laughs> and Matthew says, we'll have to get his attention in a different way. Nick is the best. You know, there's another one, too. Like, the match is Sting and Darby versus the Bucks, but it is not official yet. And so, you know, the story here is that they're trying to get this match and they're just being ignored. And so what better way to get the match than to cost them the tag team titles? I mean, you think about it. Sting's last match ever is a bigger match than an AEW World Championship match. Yeah. Those titles, th those chances, I don't want to say they will come and go, but they will get another chance in the future. You get one chance for Sting's last match. Sting can put over one guy on the way out. It's Ricky Starks. And then in his retirement match, he can get a big win, yeah. send the people home happy, yep. beat the Young Bucks in the best match you'll have in AEW most likely. Yeah. Christ, it's a Young Bucks and Darby. Uh, uh, Sting could fall asleep during the match. It'd probably be the best match he's had in all of AEW. Yes. So it all works out. 
Swerve Strickland versus a mystery opponent who we have no idea who it is. And then uh, all the way back to early 90s WCW and grabbed Robbie V. It was Rob Van Dam, everybody. Yes. And then Hangman notes, Swerve did not read the fine print. Not only do we get to pick each other's opponent, we also get to pick the stipulations. And so this is now a hardcore match. And Rob, at that exact moment, throws a chair at Swerve's head, which Jeff Hardy had also done to Moxley in the opener. Now, there were a lot more chair-involved stuff in this match than there was in that opener, but... Uh, I mean, that opener may as well have been a hardcore match as well. Well, it was, in a way. I mean, literally, they said... What was the exact term that they used? Relaxed. Uh, yeah, they've relaxed They've they've relaxed the rules for this match. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. That's what they say when they don't want to do it. Relaxed the rules. Yeah. So, uh, this was the Rob Van Dam Showcase to show everyone in 2024 that... At the end of the day, he can still be Rob Van Dam. It's not exactly the same Rob Van Dam, because let me tell you something, this guy was tired. He was tired, but you know what? A lot of times people chant, you still got it, yeah. and they're just being nice. And a lot of these chants, I'm like, eh, whatever. But goddamn, this guy still got it. When he... 53 years old. Every time he had to do a Rob Van Dam thing, he did a Rob Van Dam he thing. He did it. Great, yes. It's just, there was a lot of downtime between the Rob Van Dam things. Yes. And uh, a lot less. For a while, when he's first started, he's he's doing these weird whips on the floor where he's just backing up. And I actually thought he was hurt, like came out hurt. But then the match goes and he starts running around and he, he can run. Not far, but he can run. And uh, it is no DQ. So Brian Cage run out and shoves Rob off the top rope. Out come Hook's gloriously flowing locks and also a chair. He makes a save and chairs. Uh, Cage to the back, and he's been... Cage is challenging him, I guess, for the FTW title, and uh, and uh, Hook is team to drop in the past. So there you go. Uh, Swerve, who got like, I don't know, three moves in this match. Hit a rolling stunner for two, and uh, he gets a stomp, and, uh, and the angle he hit the Swerve stomp at looked absolutely no fun. Swerve with Rob in a chair that didn't seem to move. Swerve goes up top, somebody gets bleeped, and Swerve goes through a table. Rob tries a chair. Crowd went nuts for that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob tries a chair assisted frog splash, but Swerve escapes. Swerve hits a chair assisted house call for two. But he hits the Swerve Stomp. He is doing the thumbs to the head thing. Rob's flipping him off, but Swerve stomps him and pins him. And Samoa Joe is pissed. His two challengers, who we all know are challengers, even though they have not been officially named, both won their matches tonight. That's a bad night for Joe. You know, I'm surprised more people haven't figured this out yet, but. We all know that fans love tables. They chant for tables. We want tables. You can have uh, you, the, the the building could be on fire from a match, and they'll still just want a fucking wooden table. Yeah. But you know, everyone they grab a table. The people pop. They set up the table, and then somebody puts somebody through a table. It's a big pop. But what's actually the biggest pop is when someone goes through a table unexpected. Sure. And that's what happened in this match when when Rob went up to the top. And he got kicked and went off the top and crashed through the table outside. The people weren't expecting him to go through a table. And so when he went through the table, they totally lost their shit. So this happens every now and then. You know, it doesn't happen regularly for some reason. I would think this is one of those spots that, like, everybody would start doing. And maybe they will. But when you set up a table, and then you just go away from it and start doing other spots, and people can't see the table. Not like when it's up in the corner and you go to throw somebody, but it gets reversed and they go through whatever. I'm talking about they forget the table. They don't even see it. They're watching something up here in its misdirection. Guy goes through the table there every time. Huge pop. This match was very good. Mm -hmm. So Heyman comes out with a mic. And I wasn't sure what he was going to say. It had not occurred to me that he would say, I'm here to discuss rankings. <laughs> Yeah. So he says, we are both undefeated. We should be at the top of that list. You won that title, but I will never let that happen. I am the next world champion, not you. And Swerve gets a mic and just states a very obvious point. I've beaten you twice. I have nothing left to prove to you. I have nothing left to prove to anybody else. Heyman disagrees. You never beat me. It took all of Mogul Embassy. Man to man, you can't lace my boots. And so Swerve challenges him one more time. After that, we are done. And uh, then my recording ended. So if anything happened in the last 30 seconds there, I missed it. But Let me uh, 
Where were we? Yeah, one more match after that, we're done. Yeah. And it was just Joe grinning at the booth. There you go. Hangman swerved next week. Winner getting Joe at Revolution. Mm-hmm. Pay-per-view caliber show next week. And they've sold a good number of tickets as a result. Excellent. So, yeah, we've seen a change here where uh, over the months of... Uh, December month of December, I guess January. Uh, the focus was all the Continental Classic, which made for very very excellent shows to watch, but did not do much to build. I guess it was at World's End, so yeah, it was December, but uh, didn't do a whole lot to build the pay per view. We're going the other way now, where the build for this pay per view is tremendous, or at least some, at least the build for big matches, but as a week to week show, it is not as good. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.